So hemophilia, as I mentioned before, it is one of the congenital bleeding disorder, or sometimes we can say it is inherited, and usually inherited in males more than females. Females usually carrier of the condition, while uh, male more affected by hemophilia. Hemophilia can be, as I mentioned before, classified into hemophilia A and hemophilia B. Hemophilia A, when there is deficiency in factor 8. Hemophilia B, when there is deficiency in factor 9, or sometimes called Christmas disease. Hemophilia actually can be further classified into mild, moderate, and severe, or according to the severity of the condition, according to the level of factor 8 deficiency. For example, if the level of factor 8 more than 5%, so in this case, we can say this is mild hemophilia. But if the level of factor 8 between 1 to 5, in this case, we can say this is moderate hemophilia. If the level of factor 8 less than 1%, so in this case, we can say this is the severe type hemophilia. Actually, the normal concentration or the normal level of factor 8 within the blood should be uh, 25%. This is the normal condition, 25% of factor 8. But when the level of factor 8 decreased, so in this case, it can be uh, classified hemophilia according to the level of factor 8. Because the treatment actually, medical treatment, depends on the uh, level of factor 8, whether mild, severe, or major. So how we can uh, manage patient with hemophilia? First of all, detection of the patient and detection through history from the history of uh, the patient's relative, whether there is any extensive or severe bleeding due to trauma or tooth extraction, or the patient, uh, uh, him or herself, uh, suffers from bleeding due to trauma or tooth extraction, or even uh, uh, the patient suffers from certain illnesses that compromise the hemostatic mechanism or may lead to bleeding, or even the patient might taking certain uh, drugs that promotes thinning or increased fluidity of the blood. This is what we call antiplatelets or anticoagulants. All of these should be uh, known from the patient during, during history taking. Also, actually, the sign and symptom, and also the uh, medication. So from the medication, from the sign and symptom, all of these actually we can do, and even the laboratory investigation, we mentioned prothrombin time or uh, activated partial thromboplastin time, from laboratory investigation, from history, from sign and symptom, medication, all of these might be uh, facilitate the detection of the patient with hemophilia. After detection, the patient should be referred for physician for medical treatment. We also we have to do consultation with hematologists. Consultation includes the type of hemophilia, whether hemophilia A or hemophilia B, the severity or the level of factor A, whether there is severe deficiency, mild or moderate, and also the treatment, whether to give the patient a replacement. A replacement includes plasma constraint or cryoprecipitate or even fresh frozen plasma. Sometimes we may need stimulants of factor 8, dysmopratine, or sometimes we may give the patient antifibrinolytic agents such as transglamic acid or amino acid. acid. This is antifibrinolytic agents to stabilize or to prevent uh, lysis of the uh, blood flow. Sometimes we may need to give the patient the steroids, actually. Steroid acts as uh, inhibition of the immune system because uh, when we give replaced factor 8, there is certain inhibitors, which actually these are antibodies. These are prevent the function of the fact of the replaced factor 8. So we give steroid to inhibit these uh, inhibitors, which is the immunoglobulin G or antibodies, and to facilitate a function of replaced factor 8. So this is might be discussed with the hematologist. Separate construction in certain situations. Actually, the separate uh, usually constructed from acrylic resin. Uh, this is to uh, give mechanical support to blood clot, to prevent dislodgement of the blood clot. Actually, this should be smooth enough to prevent injury or trauma to the soft tissue. Perform a traumatic and good surgical technique. This is in order to prevent uh, further injury or laceration of the soft tissue, so we have to do good surgical technique. Patient should be free of infection. Actually, with infection, usually there is inflammation and there is hyperemia, 
So we have to treat infection to prevent the exaggeration of the condition due to hyperemia associated with infection. Use local measures to control excessive bleeding. Local measures include pressure pack by cotton or gauze, by use of sergicine or oxacil, by use of collagen fibrils or gel foam. All of these induce blood, uh, blood clot formation. Even we can use thrombin actually. All of these actually local measures to induce uh, blood clot formation. Consider prophylactic antibiotic to prevent postoperative infection. To prevent postoperative infection, we can use antibiotic, and as I mentioned before, this is to because inflammation and hyperemia may exaggerate the condition. Lastly, we have to avoid aspirin and aspirin containing compounds. Aspirin actually is what uh, the action of aspirin is to prevent aggregation of the platelets. So, aspirin and aspirin containing compounds should be uh, avoided. Actually, not just aspirin. And aspirin containing compounds, but also any anti inflammatory, non steroidal, anti inflammatory, anti inflammatory drugs should be avoided because all these drugs inhibit the aggregation of the platelets and induce bleeding. So we have to avoid not just aspirin and aspirin containing compounds, but all non steroidal, anti inflammatory drugs should be avoided. So this is the dental management of patients with hemophilia. And thank you for your attention.